Uh, I'm going fast with this introduction. Uh, as you know, cellular senescence is a response to multiple types of damage resulting in a, in a stable cell cycle arrest. And similarly to senescence, apoptosis can also be triggered by the same set of cellular events. One of the main differences is that uh, senescent cells can implement a complex secretory phenotype, which is the, the SASP, which is able to recruit uh, the immune system. And then these cells can be cleared in an efficient manner. And this, in cases of occasional damage, results in, in tissue regeneration, in a complete uh, repopulation of the damaged tissue. So I want to highlight all of these uh, beneficial effects of cellular senescence when all of these processes, all of these steps are efficiently uh, accomplished. So cellular senescence plays an important role in embryonic development, also in tissue regen regeneration or in wound healing as uh, shown by Marco De Maria. And it is the basis indeed of tumor suppression and in some cases of tumor uh, regression. However, upon persistent damage or upon persistent oncogenic stress, all of these sequential steps can be uh, interrupted and this results in the accumulation of senescent cells. And when these cells accumulate are, and, and are not eliminated, they can uh, produce detrimental effects because this gives rise to a chronic inflammation that indeed favors some age-related disorders such as fibrotic disorders or even cancer. So it is known that cellular senescence associates to multiple human diseases and it is one of the hallmarks of aging. In the last few years, evidences are accumulating that the eradication of senescent cells ameliorates and even reverts some of the pathological manifestations of these diseases. And also the elimination of these cells, uh, as mentioned by, by Peter, is able to increase the lifespan in mice. And this has been tested genetically and, and also by using senolytics. So um, we have generated mesoporosilic nanoparticles able to target uh, senescent cells. So these nanoparticles can be uh, loaded with different tracers, with uh, uh, cytotoxic drugs, also with DNAs, proteins, and the technical novelty of these nanoparticles, of these mesoprusic nanoparticles, is that they have a coat of galactoligosaccharides in such a manner that when they are, uh, uh, when they are exposed, uh, when they are uh, exposed to the cells, normal cells can uh, uptake these nanoparticles and eventually they are eliminated by exocytosis. However, in senescent cells, due to the increased lysosomal beta galactosidase activity, the coat is digested and then the cargo can be released. This is the, the rationale of the design of these nanoparticles. So a working hypothesis is that these uh, sugar-coated silica bits can be an effective approach to target senescent cells in different pathological tissues or in different pathological situations. So they can be potentially used for diagnosis uh, to image senescent lesions. They can be potentially used for therapy in order to eliminate these tissues, uh, this, uh, to eliminate senescent cells accumulated in pathological tissues. And another interesting approach is the use of these nanoparticles in combination with senescence inducing chemotherapies in order to induce first senescence and then to eliminate these cells. So we have validated these nanoparticles in cells undergoing oncogene-induced senescence. In this case, uh, nanoparticles were loaded with a fluorophore. And as you can observe here, uh, the fluorophore was released in oncogene-induced senescent cells, but not in the control cells. We have validated these nanoparticles as well in, in cells undergoing chemotherapy-induced senescence by using palbocyclic. So here the fluorophore was released uh, preferentially in these cells undergoing uh, palbocyclic induced senescence when compared to the controls. And we have tested this in melanoma cells, in lung cancer cells with similar results in, in different uh, human cancer cell lines. Also, we validated these 
novel system uh, in a model of subcutaneous xenografts. So here the mice were injected um, with melanoma cells to induce uh, tumors in the flanks, and they were treated with palbocyclic to induce cellular senescence. This works very well. And when mice were injected with nanoparticles loading, uh, loaded with uh, fluorophore, with rhodamine, then the tumors uh, coming from the palbocyclic treated mice uh, were active for the fluorophore. And this can be image in, a, in an efficient manner. We did the same also with lung cancer uh, cell lines. And in this case, we loaded nanoparticles with another fluorophore with ICG, which is able uh, to be detected in, in the alive animal because it gives uh, fluorescence in the, in the infrared. So here, uh, the fluorescence was observed only in palbocyclic mice, but not in the tumors of the control mice. So this is an efficient system uh, uh, to trace senescent cells in vivo. And the next step was loading these nanoparticles with cytotoxic drugs. So for this, we uh, perform a, a drug screening assay with a library of uh, almost 100 chemotherapeutic uh, drugs already approved for a clinical use. And we found that doxorubicin is indeed able to kill both control and senescent cells at low doses. So go, we loaded nanoparticles with doxorubicin. And what we found is that uh, in the case of senescent cells, uh, nanoparticles are activated, and this produces an apoptotic response in these cells, whereas control cells are protected from the release of the drug from the re uh, release of doxorubicin. This is what happens in, in a cell viability assay. If control cells and senescent cells are exposed to doxorubicin, both start uh, to die. And at 12 hours after the addition of doxorubicin, all of the cells were dead. However, when encapsulated in our uh, nanodevices, nano this is what happened. Senescent cells, similarly to the free doxorubicin, started to die, but uh, control cells remain alive. We have, a, uh, we have explored the roots, the different roots of internalization of these nanoparticles. In the case of doxorubicin, it is known that it is, it is an agent that intercalates DNA, and as a consequence, it colocalizes with the nuclei of both control and senescent cells. However, when encapsulated in our nanodevices, this is what happens. Doxorubicin localizes in a perinuclear uh, location, which explains in control cells why these cells are protected from the action of doxorubicin. In senescent cells, it, it happens the same, but after three hours of the addition of nanoparticles, we uh, were able to observe how doxorubicin translocates to the nuclei of these cells producing uh, the cytotoxic uh, effects. And also we determined that the cargoes uh, encapsulated in these uh, nanodevices, when activated in senescent cells, uh, substantially colocalized with the lysosomes. So uh, we, uh, we designed an experiment in vivo to, to test these therapeutic nanoparticles in a model of subcutaneous xenografts. And here, the, the, these mice were treated for almost three weeks, uh, daily with the nanoparticles. And as, as it can be observed here, uh, nanoparticles per se, even loaded with doxorubicin, uh, have had no effects on the tumor size progression in these mice. When these mice were treated with palbocyclic to induce senescence, the tumors were arrested. And only in this case, if we combine palbocyclic with therapeutic nanoparticles, we can uh, strongly reduce the tumor size. So this results in, in, in almost uh, the elimination of the tumors. The important thing here is that we can prevent the, cardiotoxi, uh, the cardiotoxicity effects of the doxorubicin in these mice. So by the encapsulation of the chemotherapeutic drugs, we prevent off-site effects. We did the same for uh, Nabitoclax, 
um, basically with the same results in combination with palbocyclic, the tumors were uh, strongly reduced and almost disappeared. And we were able to prevent the offside effects of Nabitoclax, in this case, thrombocytopenia. We have also expanded the use of these therapeutic nanoparticles to a model of uh, lung fibrosis by using bleomycin. We know that this disease uh, is associated to cellular senescence. Um, for this, we injected mice with bleomycin, and after uh, two weeks, uh, mice were treated with, uh, uh, with nanoparticles encapsulating uh, a fluorophore. Then the, the, the lungs were collected, and as you can observe here, uh, for the bleomycin treated mice, these lungs were positive for AC beta gal activity. And uh, the result was very clear. So here, nanoparticles were activated and released the fluorophore specifically in fibrotic lungs and not in the control lungs. We did the same with nanoparticles encapsulating doxorubicin with very similar results. So doxorubicin was released in fibrotic lungs. We study also the biodistribution of nanoparticles in these model systems and found that after, early after intravenous injection in these mice with nanoparticles encapsulating rhodamine, uh, nanoparticles lo locate in the lung mainly, and also in the reticulum endothelial system. However, only uh, in the case of bleomycin treated mice containing senescent cells, accumulating senescent cells in their lungs, only in this case, nanoparticles were activated and released the fluorophore. At 24 hours after the uh, injection, the intravenous injection of nanoparticles, we only found trace amounts at the liver and at the spleen. We studied what is the cellular type targeted by these nanoparticles, and for this, we performed a flow cytometry assays. And we found uh, that the percentage of rhodamine positive cells is strongly incre increased in lungs coming from bleomycin treated mice when compared to the controls. And in these lungs, uh, most of the cells were fibroblast, and only a 15% of the cells were uh, epithelial cells from the lungs. So we isolated the cells, we isolated the RNA to perform RNA, uh, uh, to study the gene expression profiles, and we found that uh, uh, these pathways uh, associated to cellular senescence are uh, upregulated in these cells. And we found the differentially expressed genes associated to cellular senescence, which were validated by real-time quantitative PCR. So finally, uh, we tested this therapeutic approach in vivo in, in the model of bleomycin-induced pulmonary fibrosis. And at day 10, after bleomycin uh, uh, injection, intratracheal injection in these mice, we started a daily treatment with uh, free doxorubicin or with nanoparticles encapsulating doxorubicin. And, as I did, uh, and we tested uh, by, uh, by CT how uh, what was the effect in these lungs. And when animals were treated with doxorubicin, there was no effect at all. However, when treated with these therapeutic nanoparticles, the inflammation and the, the affected uh, areas in the lungs were strongly reduced. We determined that there was an important reduction in the fibrotic scar in the lungs of these mice. And this correlates with a reduction of uh, this P21 positive cells. P21 is a, is, a, is a main marker in lung fibrosis in the context of, uh, of induced senescent cells in this, in this most model. This is very important and is the, the, the fact that we didn't, we didn't find any uh, offside effects in these treated mice for almost three weeks. So we explored the, 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 the serum profiles of these miles, and the renal function and the hepatic function was not altered uh, upon this treatment. And also, uh, there were no defects uh, in the liver histology after the treatment of these mice. And which is more important, at the end of the experiment, we uh, perform a functional assay of the lungs. Uh, this is a platysmography assay. Uh, measuring the lung resistance and also the dynamics, uh, the, the dynamics compliance of these mice. And we were able to observe that the parameters uh, were recovered in the case of 
uh, of the mice treated with therapeutic nanoparticles. So in other words, we were able to restore the pulmonary function of these mice. This is a three-dimensional rendering that we did with uh, the CT images uh, from these mice. So at the beginning of the treatment, you can observe uh, these gray areas, um, which are uh, fibrotic areas or damaged areas in, in, in these mice. And after the treatment, as you can observe here, there was an almost completely uh, recovery of the, uh, of the structure of the lung. So these nanoparticles were able to promote tissue regeneration. We have published these results recently in an embo-molecular medicine paper, and now these nanoparticles, uh, well, there is a company, a, a, a spin-off in Spain, which is uh, Senolic Therapeutics, and they are moving forward our uh, nano-devices uh, to early phase clinical trials. This is the, uh, the objective now. So in conclusion, we have developed a pharmacological vehicle that is able to preferentially release drugs into senescent cells. These nanoparticles uh, loaded with cytotoxic drugs are able to ameliorate lung fibrosis. They can reduce collagen and even recover lung pulmonary function. They can be used uh, as a cancer combined therapy resulting in almost full tumor progression. And this encapsulation method is able to reduce the exposure of normal tissues to the toxicities associated to uh, chemotherapies. So as, uh, among all of the different future applications, uh, I want to highlight this is a therapeutic tool that can be used in multiple senescence-related human disorders. It can be used as a cancer-targeted therapy in combination with senescence-inducing chemotherapeutic drugs. We know now that many chemotherapeutic drugs are able to induce senescence instead of apoptosis at the clinical concentrations. It can be used also as a diagnostic tool uh, for uh, senescent-related disorders to, to, to image the, the senescent burden and to evaluate the response of solid tumors to senescence-inducing chemotherapies and even to detect premalignant lesions because most of the premalignant lesions in humans accumulate senescent cells. Similarly, it can be used as a theranostic tool aimed to simultaneously uh, image uh, senescent cells and to, er to eradicate uh, these pathological uh, tissues. And this is a, a vehicle that can be loaded with drugs, tracers, contrast agents, but also with uh, interferons, uh, RNAs, with, with, with many different uh, cargoes even with senolytics, and one interesting approach is, for example, using these uh, nanoparticles to target important signaling pathways to modulate the SASP in senescent cells. And it is tempting to uh, speculate the use of these therapeutic nanoparticles in the context of aging. This is something that we are really very interested in testing now. So I want to thank uh, Manuel Serrano, because most of this work was done when I was in, in his laboratory. And also Miguel Rovira, he's also co-first author in this, in this paper. Nanoparticles were designed and um, synthesized in the group of Ramon Martinez, and also with the help of uh, Jose Ramon Murgia at the Polytechnic University of Valencia. And I want to, th I want to thank Senolytic Therapeutics for promoting now all of this research. And this is my group, my current group in Cambridge, where I moved two years ago. Uh, I'm part of the Cancer Early Detection Program. And uh, my laboratory is mainly focused on the fundamental processes and mechanisms that lie at the origin of lung cancer. This is our focus now. And we are interested in developing uh, devices for lung cancer early detection and, and, and therapeutic agents uh, as well. Thank you very much.